Hey guys, we're here live at the Time Massage Jam. We're going to work on uh, feet, calves, and I think generally lower leg, but we might include like a little bit of gluteal work. When we hold these Time Massage Jams, these are really designed for you to work along with us. This is a little bit like a more ornery Time Massage influence. Bob Ross is the joy of painting. Even though I'm going to show you how to do stuff and you think I'm an artist, I really want you to get paints and a canvas and work with us live. This is couples massage on steroids. I can show you how to work on your partner and show you how to work on your partner effortlessly. We're going to go into working on the legs and I'm going to start out by working on uh, Kristen and her gluteals. Have you been having problems with anything, by the way? Uh, eh. Yeah, but yeah. lower legs. Lower legs? Okay. I mean, my glutes will be tight, but yes. What I did here is I, I put my left foot just a little bit above the knee. And I'm slowly going to take this right foot behind the, the greater trochanter of her femur. You can see that my foot is kind of down and it's like I'm going to scoop up. Okay. So my foot is down and I'm going to scoop up into the gluteals. So I want you to watch this. I'm going to push my foot in and scoop up. And I'm pressing right into the side of the keister right there. And this is just a a softening relaxation move. This is something I do in tons of my sessions. This is also really good for people who have low back pain because you're getting some motion through their lumbar spine. Just like Bob Ross, as we go through some of this stuff, I'm going to talk to you about. Sorry, I just, it made me giggle. Do so you like the Bob Ross? I do. Is, I there, do. is everybody laughing at my Bob Ross and Joe painting? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> We're going to talk about tools and techniques. When I watch Bob Ross and it's like, ah, that's what he's doing. So he's putting two different color paints on the same brush. So he's not completely mixing them, but when he makes a, a mark, it's like, then it's like multicolored. And sometimes they kind of blur between the lines. That sort of thing happens in my work as well. And I was quite taken aback at the 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 notion of getting the public to work along with you and of course he was through pbs we're through youtube and we have global reach i just finished a podcast about hog hunting i don't get it either just figure it out later i'm going to take my foot and i'm going to work right up her it band this is again just to soften just to get some of this stuff to let go very broad very gentle i could easily overwhelm someone i'm using my hands on steroids. My hands on steroids, which are better known as feet. My hands on steroids. To deliver big, broad pressure right along the IT band. Right along vastus lateralis and right along the femur of the leg. Now that I've softened some of that up, I want to get into the lower legs. And you said this has been tight for you? Yes. What's been going on with that? Uh, I've just been uh, running. Running? Why you do that? I ran and I rode a horse. I did like a little UTV riding and so everything just bracing. So I'm tight. <laughs> my, my whole response is just to shake my Why you do that? That's, that sounds like you're destroying yourself. The way I'm going to do this some of the work I do, I think it's interesting. I use cameras heavily. I think some of the work I do looks inordinately boring on camera. I don't think it's not Bob Ross. It don't, it don't be like, Ooh, we painted a tree. Like it's just, I don't know. It's just a guy putting his foot on people. I don't, I don't understand. I'm going to work on the calves, but I'm going to work on the calves in a completely different way that people in my industry just aren't completely familiar with. This is going to allow me to work on a 300 pound guy if I want, completely overwhelm them with pressure and do so in a way that's completely effortless to me. And, and what I'm going to do is come in and I'm going to lift and I have this sort of, what do they call it? There's a name for this in yoga, a pigeon pose. There's a little bit of, you know, I'm, I'm to the side. I'm not stacked up like this. I'm seated down to the side like this. And what we wind up with is this big, broad, uh, rolling her calf out on my thigh. Now, is that too much, Kristen? Yep. Is it close to too much? Yes. 
I'm not applying hardly any pressure. I'm just using my hands to, to move her leg. As I go in and do this, I'm just rolling out my quads and my adductors. A lot of pressure. Now, how big and broad is that side? If I was, if I was doing that, it's like these two structures right here on my arm. How big and broad is that? It's huge. Most massage therapists do not have a tool like this, or I should say they're not using this tool when they're on a table. This is why I'm such a big mat work fan, because I feel like it changes the body mechanics enough that the work is approachable to anyone. Just like this crazy dude named Bob Ross who had a little Afro hoop who did wet on wet technique that made it the happy little trees. Oh, look, it's so easy. Look, clouds. Look how easy. I used to spend hours trying to make clouds. Now it takes five minutes. Rolling out on my thigh. If I choose to focus on the lower portion of the leg or go up, I can just lift her leg and scoot down or lift her leg and, and move my way up. I'm pressing primarily into the following muscles. Gastrocnemius comes from the same root word, I think it's Greek, for belly, gastro, gastrointestinal tract, gastrox, the bellies of the calves. Those are the more superficial calf muscle we see on runners, where they split. I'm rolling out her gastrox right on my leg, right here. This doesn't look, to me, all that physically impressive. She's about to jump off the mat. Yeah. She's like, oof, oof, feels like a lot of pressure. And then as I'm working through, increasingly giving a little more pressure, we get the soleus. Soleus is a larger flat muscle that's underneath the more superficial gastrocnemius. I'm rolling out soleus. And one of the things I can tell you guys is if you have plantar fasciitis, I highly suggest you try this on someone and work on their calves and work on their soleus. I see a lot of foot pain coming from this area. As I'm doing this, just continue to roll her out. I'm going to stack. I'm going to find a, a good spot that feels dense to me. How's that right there? <laughs> That's where the gremlins live. Yeah, the gremlins. Oh, nice. Yeah, don't, don't, don't feed them after midnight. Don't give them water. If I come in on top with an elbow right into tibialis anterior, right up on the outside of the lower leg. So to give you a good camera view on this, I've got her stacked. She's pressing down into the calves and the soleus, the gastrox, but I'm going to stack my elbow on top. I'm stacking my elbow right on top of tib anterior. If you look at this, from a different camera angle, I'm going to show this in a second, you're going to see that my elbow is essentially right above my thigh. I'm sandwiching her leg. She's dead. Dead. She wakes up for it, laughs, dead. It's like Bob Ross, he puts me to sleep, you know what I'm saying? It's so relaxing. It's like, oh look, we're getting paying a little troop right here. I'm like, oh, Bob. I'm going to lift and move just a little bit higher. Just move like a half inch right in there. The reason I moved, and this happens organically, as you work on people, you'll notice that piece of tissue, when you press into, say, its tip anterior, there'll be a spot and it feels like, huh, the, the other part of the muscle feels more free moving and soft. And then all of a sudden it feels kind of dense. Normally you're going to spend a little more time pressing where it feels dense. It feels more innervated. If that, I don't know if that's the correct word. It feels more active. It feels more intense, maybe lightly painful. If I'm worried about pressure, I can always ask Kristen, do you want more pressure or less? I'm good. She's good because I have learned how to stack body weight just like, oh, man, Bob Ross was pushing the paint into that can. He was fighting that can that canvas. He had a, he had an industrial, like what, easel? Yeah, he had like an industrial easel. Why? I'll talk about, I don't give a shit. I'll call, talk about Bob Ross all day. So 
as he's pushing into it, do you get a sense when he's on camera of how much pressure he's using? Yes. No. He can say it, but do you really... I mean, you guess you really don't know. Ah, see, and that's... But no, no. Kind of like what we're doing. But this is the comparison. Because when he takes that little knife and he goes to the mountain and he goes, very, very light. Very, very... He says it again and again. Very, very light. Very, very light pressure. Just enough to get the paint to adhere to the canvas. And then other times he's like... Like you can hear it scraping the canvas. And you can pick it up auditory and you can hear his words, but you don't know until you do it. That is the big difference, in my opinion, based on what we're doing. It's the big difference I see with massage therapists. Do they know how much pressure I'm applying right now? No. When students are in class and somebody's getting feedback on pressure, somebody, a student does something to a student's arm, and then they say, hey, will you do it to me? And I go, sure. And I do it, and they'll say, what's the difference? And they're like, he uses more pressure. Mm. Almost nine times out of ten. The students are learning. They don't know how much pressure to deliver. Yeah, and they haven't received it to know. Does, does my work typically deliver more pressure than people think of from Swedish? Oh, yeah. Or from deep tissue? Yes. Yes. But you can't feel that on camera. Now, I'm, I'm hooking into this spot right here. I'm, I'm on the tib anterior, right? But I'm about to change this, and I'm going to shear a certain direction, probably a little bit up, but we're going to let her choose. When I do this, Kristen, I'm going to shear just a little bit up or a little bit down. What do you prefer? Uh, she prefers the up. She says with some sort of hesitancy. Because <laughs> it's sliding up. Right there? Yeah. Still good? Yes. There we go. they're not necessarily gonna know how much pressure I'm delivering. As I'm hooking this in, can you move your foot just a little bit for me? Because now I'm getting her to pull through all of those muscles. Getting her to move all of that. In a bit, I'm gonna release pressure. Is your, is your foot gone all pale and all uh, tingly and numb? Tingly Cut off any blood flow there? I mean, I feel there's a little blood flow cough, but it's not tingly or numb yet. There's one set of muscles on the outside of the leg we're going to get into in just a second. And since she was giving me some movement, I'm going to let her do that for a second until she gets to a comfortable spot. Oh. oh. <laughs> was that a joke to find a comfortable spot? Oh. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll stop Turn it up to 11. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Spinal tap. I'm going to slowly, slowly back off. And then this is just allowing, because we were pressing from both sides. Deep compression. She probably felt blood like rush down uh, through her leg, through her foot. All very healthy for people with no cardiovascular issues, by the way. The muscles we're about to get into are fun the peroneals. Now, one of the more fun things that I point out is, man, there was this muscle called peroneus longus that's on the right in blue. They went and just changed the name on us. Like, why y'all do that to me? Listen, I got a B in anatomy as it was started in school in 2002, and now you just changed the name to fibularis longus. Yep, you know that? They changed the name. When did they do that? Recently. And I want to oh, And did, ago, did so. we did we vote on that? Did we did we, not vote, did, we, we did, did we get did we get any say in that? No, we did not. <laughs> what I'm doing here is I'm going to use my thumbs to press on the outside of the leg here cuz I want to see if I roll there. Mm -hmm. And she's having a little bit of, a little bit of tightness right there. So we're going to do a, a crazy fun move. <laughs> we, we, strumming? strumming well, it's like ah. it's like a guitar string. I have to work it. Now, the difference is my thumbs are sharp, right? My thumbs are these little, little sharp things. How big is my knee in comparison to this? Very, very sharp. Because this, is, this feels sharp and my fingers are strong because I've been doing this stuff for years. But I can deliver with a, a broader tool. This is an elbow on steroids. An elbow on steroids. And they're like, Robert, how the hell are you going to 
I don't know, I, but how are you going to use your elbow on steroids while they're, I just don't, okay, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to change it. I'm going to bring her up like this, and I'm going to put my foot over her foot. So I'm going to try to hook here, because I want to I want to be able to use this as a handle so I can move her around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my elbow on steroids up, and I want to see if I can pull her into me. All I'm doing, you see this? is I'm going to grab around her thigh and see if I can pull her into my leg. How's that? Yep. I'm pulling her into my elbow on steroids. Am I pushing? No. I'm pulling her into my body. I'm stacking right here, and I'm pulling her into my body. I'm stacking my elbow on steroids. We're going to see if this other camera angle picks up anything at all except my back, and it doesn't. When I go right here, I'm stacking right on the lateral compartment along the outside of the lower leg. And I'm just gonna gently, with my hands, I'm just gonna pull her in. How's that? Mm -hmm. There we go. A little more? Totally. No. Okay. Is that easier to receive than my thumbs? Oh, yes. And this is less work for me. My work is an amazing biomechanical manifestation of open sourced body mechanics of being able to use your body in the most effective way to be able to help people including your family and loved ones if massage therapists act like you can't do massage i think they're wrong and i'm going to teach you otherwise and when they ask me well how many time massage jams are you going to do i'm like i don't know a thousand how's that no more than that no more than that but i'm but i'm not doing anything now if i back off to just one arm is that better I have two. Why is why is it better with two? Uh, it feels more secure. Okay. More like comforting. I don't know. It felt like I could feel the breeze blowing on that side of my leg, and so it, I don't know. It just didn't feel nice. What if I rock a little bit? Oh, maybe you chill out. Oh, okay. Sorry, I've been doing a lot of lateral movements. <laughs> now, my knee, meaning my elbow on steroids was way up here. I'm going to move it just a little bit lower, just about an inch, half inch. Right there. Lower leg, right into, and I'm going to hook right here so I can change to the peroneals, right on the outside, that lateral compartment of the lower leg, right along the fibula. Fibularis longus. It's a long one, right? Fib Peroneus brevis. Is it shorter? Kristen is dying. Dying. And all I'm doing is hanging out. All that muscle's like stone. Contemplating dukkha, the suffering, you know, Dharma truths, the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Path, Bob Ross marketing in 2021, time massage jam in America, anatomy, physiology health, hygiene, massage, education via the internet. What is going on? We, that guy's wearing a shirt and it says ideas are shit. What, a, what is going on in the world? Right there. Oh my God, it's rough. Oh my God. Now, how boring is this on camera? Super, super boring. There's nothing exciting about this. I'm gonna back off. That's a super cool way to do this work. But if it's stacked right, how does how does it does it feel intense? I mean, it feels super intense, but you have such easy control as the giver. Yeah, because because all I was doing is I just have a little tension in my hip because I was holding my my leg in that spot. That's all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it up. If I start to get tired, I tend to change it up. I assume if it's too much on my body or too much strain that it might be too much for the, the client as well, or the person I'm working on. So I tend to, to change it. I don't want you to ever do this in like strain. So what I'm gonna do is completely change my position. I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna bring her leg out with a little bit of support for my thigh right here. And I'm, I'm doing this because I wanna be able to grab the bottom of her foot and give her some stretch and movement now. Stretch and movement. Is that too much, Kristen? No. Stretch and movement. Now, feet. Because I can work the feet from this side. My fingers are on the bottom right there. 
can use my fingers curling it around you can work the toes got all this great toenail polish i don't have none of that right now lean and back get a good grip do you need more in the calf slightly slightly okay if i if i hooked my forearm right here and pulled back how's that Do you need more? Or is that enough? Oh, I was finding you. That's what was happening. My foot was like, I was like, why am I not feeling it? But yeah, that, that, that's what I'm doing. I didn't mean to fight you. It was just like my foot was locked. No, I'm just inadvertent, right? Yeah. But people we work on do that all the time. That's also why I engage in so much movement, just to see like what's going on with, with her feet. Going with the toes, I'm mobilizing all of these tarsals, moving all of this stuff in a way that feels comfortable, but we're really mobilizing all of those tiny foot bones. Muscles cause movement, and we're using movement to access, unwind, and relax those muscles. As I'm doing this, getting that grip, you're leaning back, How's that feel, Kristen? Good. Super good. Super good. Uh, oh my God, where'd the time go? I only did one leg. Yeah. My timing's way off. So I'm going to switch to the other side. Oh. <clears throat> Kristen's like, what? We need to cover like half the body in 30 minutes. And I'm like, no, one thing. I'm like, let's work on the big toe. That'll take 30 minutes. I totally do big toe in 30 minutes. I'm going to put up my hair here. It's getting hot. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. You guys make this work for you. I'm going to come in, see if I can stack her over my thigh. And this is, again, big, broad. Do you see how I'm not hyperextending the knee? We're not, we're not bending this backwards in any way, just so I can roll her calf right on my thigh. Just so I can roll her right there. You dying there? She's like, uh, yes. Oh, you cast fight? It is the death. Well, left one was having issues, so Andrew came over and did an hour massage on my left leg. But my right leg did not. That was it. Crunchy. moving my hands just naturally a little higher a little lower I'm, I'm feeling through the peroneals and then also the tib anterior trying to find out oh it's a little more tight over here Told you. Oof, right in there right in there guys if you are watching this and uh, you're paying attention i have never had a woman argue with me while i was massaging her feet just something to keep in mind just something to take note of i just want you to know in fact, if your wife ever gets into an argument with you and you decide to massage her feet, I think that fight will probably it's just pretty quick, pretty, pretty, pretty fast, all. pretty fast. If, and if you get good at it, just use it. Use, <laughs> use your powers for evil. There you go. Just, just end it right there. Oh, my gosh. And again, I'm going to come in. I'm, I'm rolling her on my thigh, not pressing. I could strum with my thumbs, but that would be a little bit too much for her. Yeah, I'd die. Like, I've got my thumbs over, but I'm not really pressing heavily with the thumbs you're more just like using them to push my leg then i'm gonna stack because there's some tightness in the tib anterior right here so i'm gonna hook right there and then pull that guy up on screen the tib anterior is big muscle on the upper outer lower leg tibialis anterior meaning the tibia to the front anterior posterior now, as I'm hooked into here, I'm going to very slowly decide, okay, do you want me to shear down towards the feet or up towards the knee? Down, please. Tell me when. When? There we go. Students who work with me in our subscription service, anybody can join this, by the way. I, I've got over 600 hours in my classroom instruction. Any, any of you who want to study with us? Massage therapists were asking why I do that. And I was trying to describe it in the most scientifically correct, succinct way. I deliver a stimulus 
and I'm hoping that her nervous system responds with relaxation. The reason I say, do you want more up or more down is I'm essentially accessing cutaneous and subcutaneous nerves to access your nervous system. And it does something else. It makes the receiver feel very engaged in what we're doing. She feels like she's part of the process of what we're doing. It's cool for me. I get to contemplate dukkha. I get to breathe. Think about the connection between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Thinking about, should I cut my hair long and put out a little afro like Bob Ross? You know, would that add to the, the nuance of the show? Like, how does that work? See, we have a show now. Do they even realize that? Ah. We have a show, Kristen. We do have a show. Time massage jam. Ah. A little up or a little down? Down. Down? Tell me when. When. Right there. Who doesn't want to have a show? If you're a, a local uh, micro celebrity here in Austin and you want us to work on you at the time of size jam, please contact us. We'll be happy to do our thing. A little more down. <laughs> Imperceptible, except ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. I love Kristen because she speaks in noise. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Effect. I love. I love. Like, <laughs> what does that mean? It's like, well, it's not really English, you know but I, I understood it, man. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I'm going to back off. <laughs> I felt the blood rush. And I didn't, I didn't soften the gluteals on this side, but this stuff sort of stuff happens. Don't have to feel like it's got to be completely balanced on both sides. You can mix it up. I'm going to slide out and go back into what I had done before. So I'm hooking just above the knee and then right, remember when my foot is down and then I'm gonna scoop up, hey, right into the tuchus, right into the gluteals. Gluteus medius is a big one, but there's also gluteus maximus in there. I usually try to, instead of having their legs splayed out, I try to have the leg with the ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder in one line as much as possible. It makes it a little bit easier for there to get some rotation uh, through the hip there. I'm going to reach out just a little bit more posterior. A little bit more to the side right there. Then we're going to switch it out. I'm going to come up and over just like we did before. I've got my, my leg bent just comfortably there so I can lean back and pull her open. Up and over, lean back and pull her open. As I'm doing this, there's some length to soleus. I say soleus and put up the feet. I don't know why I did that. There's some length to soleus, that big muscle in the calf. Because as I'm pulling the foot back, they're getting some length on that muscle to the backside there. In addition, they're getting linked to the gastrox, which we call it for the short, we call it the tib, the tib ant, the tib alis anterior, but uh, with the gastrox, the gastric nemius, just lengthening the calves there while I work on the feet. While I'm putting some pressure there, can curl the toes around, move that, pull that back and open. I can always hook my forearm because I'm going to trick her into working on my forearm. I'm going to hook right there and pull into my forearm flexors. And bring her up a little bit if I need to. It's going to be a little bit hip movement with this. Just make sure as you work, you want it to feel comfortable to you. If it doesn't feel comfortable to you, we can change it. We can make small shifts. Right in there. Oh, that feels good. I like that spot. I'm going to hang out there for a second. What if I give you some rock? How's that? So you like the footwork, you can take that. Oh yeah. But you, where your legs are I revolting. I cut the bottom of my right foot. Oh really? I stepped on glass yesterday. Oh no. Like, so I'm assuming it must be tiny, huh? Perfect. Well, a little small guy. Take right the there. Little... Forgot to grab the double key. Right <laughs> there. Work on the, the feet there. I can use my fingers to kind of hook in, feel around. can mobilize the tarsals, all those small bones in the feet, all that little stuff you can move around, work on. 
There we go. Lengthening and pulling through there. Lengthening and pulling. I'm going to slowly change it up and do what I showed before, which is I'm going to take her leg up because we're trying to get into those peroneals again. And I'm going to stack. It's about 45 degrees. And what that is is I could have her leg here, but she's kind of closed at the, the knee joint. Yeah. I, I pretty much want about 45 degrees. If I can get about 45 degrees and almost 45 degrees, that's usually a good spot where I've got some mobility to kind of move this around. And I'm pressing right into this lateral compartment with my elbow on steroids. So got to turn, got to stack. I'm gonna hook my leg. Gonna, I can scoot away, I can scoot closer, whichever I need. I'm gonna put this other foot right on top just to give it some extra support there. And then I'm gently gonna pull her in. I can feel the muscle right there. It takes a little time to learn how to feel with your legs. Whee. Too much? Nope. All good? Yeah. Uh, just tender. Just no more. No more. I'm hooking with, with this right hand and just leaning back, very effortless to deliver. Kristen and I have constant conversations about the fact that what I am teaching you is in large part unavailable in your community. Yes. Get your partner, go find a massage therapist, find someone who does Thai massage, if you are lucky enough to find someone who does, and beg them to train with me to join the $7 subscription and work with us live. We're going to get a pretty standard schedule for the Time Massage Jam and keep teaching. And if you can't get a therapist to work on you, I will teach you how to work on your partners, friends, family, loved ones. If you're a 15-year-old kid and you want to hook up, beat, beat up your dad a little bit, I'll teach you how. <laughs> I'll teach you how effectively. Pretty intense, right? Yeah. Not too much? No. Just tender. Yeah. Just tender. Now a little rock. Oh, no rock. <laughs> I totally love rock. Like, my lower legs are so shot. I'm like, eh, eh. Sorry, bug. Saving me. I like the sacredness of life, but if there's a bug wandering around, I'm like, nope, sorry. Time to go. She stayed away from me. Whee. And slowly. Holy you're gonna disengage slowly. Almost feels like her leg reinflates. It's kind of what it feels like when you let go of yeah. like some tense muscle. I'm gonna move my elbow on steroids just a little bit lower. Just like an inch, half inch maybe. And I'm going to slowly pull her in. What number is the peroneals? One, uh, five. Peroneals. I couldn't see it. I couldn't turn around. We're pressing into that lateral compartment of the lower leg. And when I say pressing, keep in mind, I'm grabbing her thigh and pulling her into my elbow on steroids. I'm, I'm pulling her very gently. She's grabbing her head, questioning some life choices right now, trying to figure out if it's worth it. <laughs> don't laugh. Like I, I know. Yeah, don't laugh. Don't laugh because it makes laugh. it hurt more. It it's bounces. It's shaking. A <laughs> little, little less pressure. Uh, it's fine if you're not laughing. There we go. <laughs> then slowly, going to back off of that. Go ahead and bring her leg out. And I think that's a very solid lower leg sequence. Feet, a little bit of calves, a little bit of peroneals, tibia anterior, kind of this lower compartment on the leg. I think that's a really good, robust way of addressing that in a short sequence that's accessible to anyone. Very easy to put down 
a sleeping bag, you know, a couple of blankets folded up on your floor to be able to work on a partner. We're going to take just a quick break. Uh, then Kristen's going to work on me. We're going to do basically some of the similar trades. She might change a few moves because her style can be a little bit different. We'll see you guys in just a minute. 